Hi, I'm Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Bench's YouTube channel. So now we're into the third film with the applied application, trying to get that absolute perfect solder joint. We have got that absolutely perfect solder joint, but what about that other piece that we had where we applied the solder onto the surface? We've just polished it in the previous film. I'll link it up ahead by here. And it's polished up fine, but you can still see the areas where that solder has flowed. Now, I'm going to show you a little technique that enables us to get rid of that shadow, that little bit of solder that is left on the surface, and then we can repolish it, and it'll look exactly the same as if you had done it the, um, the, the second way that we did in the first film, which I will link by here as well. So, you'll get the same result, but one will take longer than the other. You can see where that solder is now on that surface and if you had done it the way that I suggested you'd have a gorgeous clean solder joint all the way around. Your job is done. If you've happened to have done it this way and you've got some solder flowing onto that surface well you can see we've polished it up and it hasn't got rid of those bits of solder as you can see. So we need to get rid of it. Polishing is not going to get rid of it. What you need to do is to get a buff stick. Dependent on the type of surface you're working on, with this we've got a straight edge along here. This surface is nice and flat. In theory, a nice buff stick like this is going to work just right. If you go too hard in this direction, you're going to wear away the metal and where the area that has not been sanded or buffed is going to be slightly higher than the rest of the surface. So you really cannot go too hard trying to get rid of this solder. This is the problem. So it's a nice hard buff stick. Don't try and use a piece of emery paper like this because the emery paper will be going over the solder onto the normal bits of silver, over the solder and so forth. And you're not going to get a nice flat surface. So by using the buff stick, the buff stick should take off the high spots, and the high spots are those little bits of solder. I'm going over it. The solder also leaves an area of discoloration because the solder is not the same color as the silver due to the other alloys that have been put into it. So now, as you can see, we've got an area that is sanded, buffed, and an area now that is polished. If you want to make sure that you don't have a lip between the polished area and the unpolished area when we come to clean the whole thing up, I would then get the buff stick and again go over just to make sure that you don't have a little step between the buffed up area and the polished area. So just go over it, try and blend it all in that's looking pretty good now, but a nice hard buff stick like this with a nice crisp edge is going to get right into that area there. So that looks pretty good. You can always come along then with a the buff stick that's a little bit finer, a finer grit, or like I've got here, one that's quite worn, and go over with that now, just to try and smooth out any of the buff marks that we've got. The finer the mark, the less of an aggressive amount of polishing we've got to do. Okay, and now we can turn our attention now to our white nylon bristle brush. To get into these areas, and hopefully you'll see now that that solder is all gone off the surface, and we're back to as it should be. And whilst I'm not saying that this particular method of applying the solder to the surface, hoping then it will go underneath the applied design, I'm not saying that's wrong. Um, I'm sure it does have its place in certain applications where you cannot sweat solder. But in application like this, 
There is no need to do it that way. So I know this has only taken me about four minutes, five minutes just for this little area. It's four or five minutes unnecessary time to clean and polish. Now, if I was doing this in a bit of a production line and I did 10 of these, that's 40, 50 minutes of excess work that I have just had to incur due to the previous soldering operation. So that's looking pretty good. I'll leave it there for now. Wipe it over with a cloth just to show you what I mean now. We've removed that bit of solder. The surface now is looking fine. Let me just quickly go over it now with that rouge mop. So I should, again, I should clean this in a bit of uh, ultrasonic. Let's just pop a bit of rouge over this now for you to see what I mean. We've brought it back to as it should be. We've removed the solder. There we go. So we've removed the solder. It's back to as it was. There's no little telltale uh, discoloration where the solder was. There's no little lumps and bumps where the solder was. We've taken it completely away. So that is looking now exactly as this one did. So this was the one using the sweat solder. This was the one using the technique of applying the solder on the surface. It's taken another five minutes of cleaning up to do. Completely unnecessary waste of time, waste of resources, when if you think about the job, you could have done the job in a better technique than what we did with this one. And I'm not saying that one technique is right, one technique is wrong, because there are certain applications that you actually need to apply the solder onto the surface. For instance, if you're making tubes, for argument's sake, you have to do it that way because you don't want the knuckles to all um, get out of alignment and the solder to flow where you don't want it to flow. So yes, there are certain sort of applications that you need to do it that way, but the majority of cases, if you sweat solder, the applied design onto the surface, you will get a far better professional finish in less time than if you put the solder onto the surface. So you can see at the end of the day, identical results. One just took five or six minutes longer than doing the other one. Thank you for watching, do appreciate it. Now don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, I'd love you to subscribe. Please like this film, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, love to read what you have to say. Don't forget to be notified when films go live on our At The Benches YouTube channel. Please click the little bell icon as well and you'll get an email as soon as a film goes live. If you want to share this film with your friends, share it on social media, Twitter, wherever you want to, I'd love you to, that'd be absolutely fantastic. And I'll see you on the next film. Take care. Bye-bye.